Hey there, you made it to tutorial 5, the final step in your web development for beginners course. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, just follow the link in the description to get access to all the course materials. So, by now you're comfortable with the basics of HTML and CSS, which means it is now time to introduce JavaScript. JavaScript is considered the third pillar or building block of the web. In this tutorial, we'll explain what JavaScript is and how it's used by web developers. We'll also practice writing JavaScript, giving you a clear idea of what it looks like in action. Ready to complete one last web development tutorial? Let's go. So, what is JavaScript? JavaScript is a language that helps us add interactivity to our web page. What that means? It means we can use JavaScript to decide what happens when a user clicks a button or submits a form. You can use JavaScript to check for form validations, for example. Has the user entered an at the rate symbol in their email address? That's how you know that an email address is valid. And we'll actually be showing you how to do that with JavaScript. But that's not all. You can actually do a lot more with JavaScript. It's a fully functional programming language that you can learn and code not just front-end, but even back-end and sometimes desktop applications. So let's jump right into JavaScript. How do you write JavaScript? It's actually very similar to how we wrote CSS. We created a new file and then we included that file in index.html. We do the same with JavaScript. We create a new file and then we tell the browser that this is where you look for the script file. So the way you do it is, first go to Sublime and right click on the portfolio, folder, create a new file. I'll call this script.js. And you go back to HTML at the bottom of the page, just before the body is ending, you create a script tag, close it, oops, close it. And the script tag takes an attribute called SRC, just like the image. Uh, but here you put the link to the, to the address to the script file. So this is basically script.js. You save it, go back to your page, refresh. So nothing happens because we haven't written any JavaScript in our file. So let's go back. Just for the sake of this demo, let's write alert, hello world. Go back, refresh, and there you see it. The page says hello world. So we can be sure now that the JavaScript is running and it's properly included so that we can continue with the further sections. When we deep dive into the project, we'll be using new JavaScript features like control statements, variables, functions, arithmetic operators, and so on. If it gets a little overwhelming, you can always look at the course material in the video description and get a bit more insight into what those features really are. For now, let's start coding and see what we can use JavaScript for. A couple of things that we'll be doing. Selecting HTML elements, attaching clicks to listeners, getting user entered values, and JavaScript validations. So all of these things using JavaScript. So let's get started with each of them. First, selecting HTML elements. Just like with CSS, JavaScript comes with some HTML selectors. So that is how you can, can target an HTML element and then get value out of it or modify it or things like that. So let's say we want to access the input email element. So what we do is we see the ID, it's unique, email. So in the script, we can write something like let email element equals document dot get element or query selector. Then you do hash email. The hash email part is exactly the same as with CSS selectors. That is how you select in CSS if it is a ID selector, if you're selecting an ID that is. So, okay, so we have the email uh, element. Uh, let's just try logging it. So when I say console.log and I pass it this element, save it, and if I go to my page, refresh it, nothing happens. But you'll need to open the inspector and go to console tab, and there you have it. It consoled to the log the element that we selected. And just to show that this is actually consoling what we just selected, I can also console here, hello 
world for example go back to my page and there you have it you have the input element getting consoled and then you have the hello world in two lines just like we wrote so that is how you select HTML elements. You can pass in any selector here as long as it is a valid CSS selector. You can pass in an H3 to get the H3 element, the first H3 element in the page, or you can pass in a class name. It is all valid. Next, we are going to look at the click listeners. So how do you know in JavaScript when a user has clicked on a button or an element or anything? So we go back to our page. So here on this page, we have the email address field and the message field and this send message button. But how do you know when the user has clicked that button? We do that by attaching a click listener on that element. So the way you do it is you go back to your code, you find the button here, and then you give it an, a unique ID or a class name. So let's give it an ID, submit button, so that we can select it in JavaScript come back here we say let submit button equals document dot query selector and this is submit button you save and then the way you attach a click listener is you say submit button dot add event listener and then you say click and then you pass in a function here and in the function you can actually just log for now let's see Log clicked button. And then you can go back, you can refresh the page. We have an error here. So cannot read property add event listener of null. So there is a problem with our submit button here. So it is null. And uh, the reason for that could be yes. So we haven't saved our index.html. So it does not have that ID yet. So let's save that, go back and refresh. Okay, there is gone. And if I click this button now, nothing happened. And that was because the button is trying to submit this form because as you might remember, we are actually inside of a form. The way you prevent that is you go to your C uh, script.js and you do a e dot prevent default and this prevents the form from submitting so that we are still on the same page and now we can actually see the console.log happening. So let's go back, refresh, and click. So as you can see, here we have the button clicked, which is the text that we wrote here. So button click, one, two, three, just to make sure we are actually seeing it. Send message, button clicked, one, two, three. So that is how you attach a click listener to the, to the button. It also does not have to be a button, it could be anything. We could have a click listener on this input field and it can actually tell us when the user has added a new character in that field. So I press H and JavaScript will know that the user pressed H. So all of those things can just be easily done with the help of event listeners. So. We have our input fields and now we can tell when the user has clicked the send message button. But how do we get the actual data inside of the email field and the message field? Let's try to do that. So we come back to our page, our script.js and uh, let's see. So I want to find out what the user has typed so that I can print that out instead of clicked button one, two, three or whatever. So let's actually get the input fields here. So let's go back to our HTML and see we have the ID email and the ID message to our email and message fields respectively. So let's just select that with JavaScript, let email. Oh, we already have the email, so let's actually just write it there. Uh, let, oops, let message, but uh, message element equals document dot query selector. 
message. Is it just message? Yes, it is. Cool. So we have those two elements here and then here, we can actually just get the value. Let email value equals email element dot value. So we use the dot operator and we extract the value property out of it. And we do the same for uh, the text area. So message value equals message element dot value. And instead of this console log, uh, click to pattern one, two, three, let's just print email value and have a new console log. And that could say, that could print out the message value. And let's go back, refresh, try printing and nothing printed for email and for the message. Let's, let's actually just add some uh, labels here. So email is this and message is this. So refresh. So okay, so the email address is blank as you can see. That's just a placeholder there. And the message has some predefined text here that we added uh, inside of the tags uh, da, 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 here. So let's actually try to add something, refresh the page and let's say abc at the rate x, y, z, dot com. And in the message field, we can write hello, oops, delete everything that exists. We can write hello, John. Send this. And here you have it. The email is now abc at the rate xyz uh, dot com and the message is hello John. So that is how you extract value out of your email fields if you want to do anything with them. So far we have selected the HTML elements, attached click listeners uh, to our HTML elements and then we have also gotten the values that our user has entered. The last part is validations. Validations is just a fancy word for checks. So you want to know what the user has entered and if it is valid. So for example, if the user enters an email address that does not have the add the rate symbol, then you know for sure that that's not valid. So let's try to write some logic in JavaScript that such that it checks if the user has entered a valid email address. And if not, we, we tell the user that something was wrong. So instead of actually logging it, we don't need to log it here, delete that and we write a control statement if email value dot includes in C-L-U-D-E-S and we write, pass in the add the rate symbol here and we say if the email value includes an add the rate then that was all good, all good. And we can just alert the user that um, yeah, thank you for your message. Else, meaning that the email value did not contain an add the rate symbol, which means the email was probably not correct. We can just alert, oh no, that does not look like a valid email address. Please try again. Okay, that's some output. Okay, so, we have the message there. Let's go back to our page and see if that was all right. Refresh. Uh, let's first try with a valid email address. A, B, C, at the rate X, Y, Z, dot com. And uh, hello world. Send it. Thank you for your message. Now let's refresh and try with a non-valid email address. So this time just let's just do abc xyz dot com. Clearly that's incorrect. And uh, this is not reaching you because we know if it worked. Let's see. Oh no, that does not look like a valid email address pre tracking So our logic works. And uh, yeah, that's that's the email validation. End of the course, fantastic work. Remember to check out the course material for some more context on what we just saw. But hopefully you have already gotten a feel for what it means to be a web developer and to create with code. If you have gotten this far, there's a good chance you're ready for the next step. 
The Career Foundry Full Stack Web Development Program takes you from beginner to job-ready developer in as little as six months. If you'd like to find out more, just get in touch. We look forward to helping you enter this awesome career.